Good day. The state television company of Western Armenia represents the most important events of the day. Today's broadcast. Vote for the list of the future deportees of Western Armenia. The National Council of Western Armenia invites you to a meeting for its 19th anniversary. Sons of Western Armenia, Artur Alasanyan. On the issue of Armenians of Western Armenia, refugees representatives from Artsakh are getting ready for UN Forum to be held in Geneva on December 12. Condition in Armenia requires our support, Borel. The European Union is ready to develop cooperation with Armenia in the field of security and defense, Varheli. The Museum of Shushi Carpet in Yerevan will become a state and national. Vote for the list of future deputies of Western Armenia. The Electoral Commission of the Parliament of the Republic of Western Armenia presents below the official list of candidates for the 2023 legislative elections of the Parliament of Western Armenia. You are invited to participate in the elections for future Parliament of the Republic of Western Armenia. All you have to do is to fill out the requested form and apply. The voting form will be open from December 8 till December 15, 2023. The National Council of Western Armenia invites you to a meeting for its 19th anniversary. On the celebration of the 19th anniversary of the establishment of the National Council of Western Armenia, the National Assembly of Western Armenia invites you to a Zoom meeting in Armenian and French languages. The meeting will take place on December 70, 2023. In April 2, in many places, the operation of Azerbaijan armed forces were prevented and defeated by ordinary soldiers. One of them is Artur Agasyan, the captain of the combat location 7, which was located in the north of Artsakh, in the direction of Talish. According to his uh, well-organized steps, as a result of a hard battle, the enemy's special squadron Yashma fled from the position and the guys in the location had only one wounded. 19 years old Artur Agasyan was awarded by the Medal of Second Degree, Marta Kanhaj, for his bravery. In one of positions located in the north of Artsakh, our today's hero told the journalists how they met and pushed back the special squads of Paku, armed forces. For more details about the soldier, you can read on the website of Western Armenia. In 1918, at the beginning of the year, the Tatar element began to become active in the Transcaucasus, which had gradually acquired a political structure, formed its own parties, and was actively involved in the creation of national armed forces. In 1918, at the beginning of the year, the Tatar element had grown enough so that gradually acquired a political structure, formed its own parties, and was actively involved in the creation of national armed forces. The Tatars of Transcaucasus, the Azeris, were were taking advantage of the collapse of the Russian Empire, actively cooperating with Turkey. The ambitions of Azerbaijan politicians was completely coincide with the interest of Turkey. The Tatars of the Caucasus wanted to be separated from Russia. Among the events of great importance in 1970 was the confiscation of weapons and armaments of the retreating Russian army. In January, thousands of Russians were killed in the middle of the bloody events that took place in Ganzak and Shamkor. Although the Transcaucasian government acted as a unified government, the military, political and economical interests of Tatars, Georgians and Armenians were controversial. At the beginning of 1918, the territorial ambitions of the three Transcaucasian nations gradually began to take shape. All the three countries were on the way to establish a state and all three wanted to clarify and establish their borders. But territorial demarcation during the Russian government was made not on the principle of nationality but on the principle of administrative management. As a result of which there was a mixed population in almost all regions. All along with the departure of the Russian army, the clashes between Tatars and Armenians begin. The Tatars wanted to expel the Armenian population from the regions that they considered as their state borders. Besides, they think that they have territorial rights towards members of the settlements of Yerevan province. The Transcaucasian Commissariat and the same did not uh, have enough uh, power and authority to prevent those clashes. You can read about the Armenian Tatar conflicts in Transcaucasus is on the website of Western Armenian TV. Journalist Margarita Karamian raises the question who is uh, encouraging the 
action of Azerbaijan. How to explain this that a terrorist leader manages to deceive even the superpowers states like Russia, the USA, and the European Union, and how they can agree in the silence with Aliyev's obvious genocidal policy? Does it really concern the economic interest of external players, and is Azerbaijan really such an important economic factor for that state, grossly violated principles based on the international conventions, like human rights, the rule of law, and democratic values. Karamian also added that Azerbaijan skillfully submits in human actions under the so-called international norms and laws, which Eastern Armenia did not do and is not doing. Since 1988, Baku, together with Soviet and now with Russian troops, forcibly evicts Armenia from its territory. This means that a better trump card for Armenia on the international platform can never be, but it is paradoxical as well that Eastern Armenian authorities, throughout the period of independence, the authorities of Armenia did, uh, not only did everything to prevent the presence of refugees in the country from becoming part of the national strategy, but also created all the conditions for as many refugees as possible to accept the citizenship of Eastern Armenia and either leave the country or assimilate and become equal to Eastern Armenia. Ordinary citizens without any special privileges. On December 12, the International Forum of Refugees will be held in Geneva in which the delegation of Eastern Armenia will also participate. According to our information, representatives of Artsakh social organizations will also be part of the delegation. The High Representative of the European Union for Foreign Affairs and Security, Joseph Borrell, announced that the meeting with the foreign ministers of the Eastern Partnership of EU, that is first meeting before the conference, will be with the foreign minister of Eastern Armenia. I will start the day with the meeting with the foreign minister, Eastern Armenia, before the start of the meeting of foreign ministers. There is a difficult situation in the entire area of the Eastern Partnership, Belarus, Ukraine, and also the South Caucasus. It is good that uh, Georgia is moving forward on the path to EU membership, but the situation in Armenia requires our strong support. Let's see how we can increase it, said Borrell. The European Union is ready to develop cooperation with Armenia in the field of security and defense. Oliver Varheli. Oliver Varheli made a post on his Xmigro blog where he noted that the European Union is ready to develop cooperation with Armenia in the field of security and defense. I expressed our strong support for the peace process. We are ready to improve our cooperation in such spheres as security, defense, energy, communication, and trade, the European official wrote in his microblog. A few days ago, Oliver Varheli welcomed the agreement reached between Armenia and Azerbaijan as a result of which the parties agreed to exchange prisoners. The European official wrote that the AU is ready to provide further support to the new countries. Let's remind that earlier today, AU official representative Peter Stano announced that the European Union does not intend to conduct military exercise with Armenia. The AU does not consider the possibility of joint military exercises with Armenia. The AU is not a military alliance, it is a political and economic community of values, Stano stated. The European official also added that the European Union has no plans to train Armenian servicemen in the territory of EU member states. One day, the Shushi Carpet Museum in Armenia will become state and national. The exhibits of the Shushi Carpet Museum, which we wrote about earlier, are located in a private area. The carpets are located in a private area because the state authorities not only refuse to provide space to the museum, but also prohibit their display in other state museums. Before, I have been offered to either display them in other museums or mixed with other exhibits without uh, mentioning the former name, Shushi Carpet Museum, or told that they could not allocate a space because Shushi Carpet is a private collection. From my point of view, such a statement from the officials of the field of education and culture is unacceptable. Before talking about this, I would advise them to study the history of museums properly. Many famous museums in the world are created on the basis of private collections, and these circumstances cannot be a reason for such 
prohibitions. Rather, the reason lies in the fact that it contradicts the policy of the current authorities, which are preparing to sign peace treaty with our neighbors, Azerbaijan will not take the, like the fact of opening an Artsakh carpet museum on the territory of Armenia, and the current leadership of our country cannot allow it. However, times change, but culture and historical values remain being passed down from generation to generation. The Shushi Museum is different from many other museums. Its exhibits are unique in that they, uh, they have a specific history of origin as noted by word well, the renowned experts have written many scientific papers on this topic. Sooner or later, the museum will definitely open its doors in the territory of Armenia, and it will be state and national. I sincerely won't believe it, said expert.